Hi everybody, I'm Mark Wallace. In this episode, I'm going to explain the exposure triangle, which is the foundation for everything in photography. Adorama TV presents Exploring Photography with Mark Wallace. Hi everybody, welcome to this episode of Exploring Photography right here on Adorama TV. Brought to you by Adorama. It's the absolute best camera store in the world. In fact, anything you see in our videos, you can buy them at Adorama. Check them out at Adorama.com. Well, in this episode, we're going to be talking about the exposure triangle. It's really the foundation for everything about photography. And once you understand how the exposure triangle works, you're going to be able to make sure you get a great exposure, but you're also going to learn how to take control of all the buttons and dials on your camera and what they do and why they're there. But you'll also get creative control of your photographs so you can tell a better story. And so that's what the exposure triangle is all about. In fact, we're going to be spending a few episodes on the exposure triangle. We're going to break it down piece by piece so you can really get a handle on all the stuff that it does. Well, when we think about exposure, a lot of times we think about images being too bright or too dark, but there's more to it than that. We can have images that are noisy or images that are blurry or really nice and crisp or images that have lots of stuff in focus or just a one thing that's in focus or maybe it's totally out of focus altogether. And the exposure triangle helps us understand how all of that works together. Now the exposure triangle is made up of three things and these three things never change. So once you have these down, you're gonna be good to go forever. So don't fret, it's very, very simple. In the exposure triangle, we have the aperture, the shutter and ISO. And these three things work together to give us a perfect exposure. Now, I want to start to explain this by looking at the aperture. Now the aperture is inside your camera's lens. In fact, if I take this lens off my camera and we can look at this really close, I can move this in and out. And you can see clearly that the aperture is just this thing that lets light, more light in or less light in. It's growing and shrinking. So our aperture is in our lens and I can make it really big or really small by just changing the aperture value. And our aperture values have numbers like f22, f16, f11, f8. And the smaller the number, the larger the opening. And the larger the number, the smaller the opening. I know that seems backwards, but that's how it is. f16 is really small. F1.4 is really big. Now it's not important that you know what those numbers mean right now. We're going to explain that in a future episode. But right now it's important to understand that a big number means a small opening and a small number means a big opening. I guarantee we're going to make that make sense for you in a future episode. But just remember, a big opening means lots of light is coming through. And a small opening means not very much light is coming through. So we've got a big number, not very much light because it's a small hole. A small number means lots of light is coming through because it's a big opening. Our aperture controls the quantity of light coming into our camera. So that little thing in our lens, it can be open or closed. It's letting a different quantity of light come into our camera. Well, there's another thing in our camera, everybody I'm sure knows about this, it's called the shutter. Now the shutter can go at a really fast speed, in fact we'll look at this, there's the shutter, bam, goes really, let me turn on my camera, <laughs> and it goes wham, really, really fast, or I can slow that down, that was at about 4,000th of a second, I can go all the way down to 500th of a second, even down to a 30th of a second, and I can get a lot slower, half a second, one second, all the way down to 30 seconds, even a few minutes. And so just like the aperture, where it allows lots of light and not very much light, the shutter does sort of the same thing. With a really fast shutter, not very much light is coming into our camera. A really slow shutter, lots of light is coming into our camera. So we've got these two things, the aperture that can let in lots of light or not very much light, and the shutter that can let in lots of light or not very much light. And those two things have to be balanced on sort of like a scale. So if this one's letting in a lot of light, well then this one needs to restrict so we don't get too much light. Or if this one's letting in not very much light, we need to open this one up so we get more light. And so there's always a play in those two things, trying to figure out how much light to come in. And we're gonna talk about how our camera figures that out in a little bit. But the third thing in our exposure triangle is called ISO. And ISO controls the sensitivity of our camera to light. Now there's more to it than that and a lot of those really geeky guys that know lots of science are always going to post a comment and say no it's about gain and all this stuff. But it's really easy to remember our ISO controls how sensitive our camera is to light much like our eyes in a dark theater. When we go into a dark theater at first we can't really see but as our eyes adjust to the darkness then we can see just fine but we can't see as well as we can in bright daylight. The same thing is true of ISO. 
When you have a low ISO number like 100 or 200, our camera isn't very sensitive to light. And so we have to either open up our aperture really wide or make a slow shutter speed or have to be a really bright area, a really bright day. And as we increase our ISO, our camera becomes more and more sensitive to light. The problem is we also get noise in our images. So there is a penalty for having a uh, high ISO. So we have those three things. The aperture, more and less light. The shutter, more and less light. And the ISO, more and less sensitive to light, which is sort of the same thing as more or less light. And getting those three things in balance, we have something that's built into almost every modern camera, and that's called a meter. Now think about the meter sort of as a judge. The meter is looking at the uh, settings on our camera and it's saying, hey, if you set the aperture to this wide, I gotta figure out how fast the shutter speed should be. Or if you set the shutter speed to this fast, I gotta figure out how uh, big or small the aperture should be. So the meter is judging things for us. And something that's very important to note, just because two settings work or three settings work in one situation, doesn't mean it'll work in a different situation because light is constantly changing. And that's why we need a meter in our camera. All right, let's put all of this stuff together. Now that we know about the three things, ISO, aperture, and shutter, and the judge or the meter that's built into our camera, how does all of this work? Well, it's pretty simple. Normally on the exposure triangle, you set two things and our camera figures out the third using its meter. So you'll set either the ISO and the aperture and the camera will figure out the correct shutter speed or you'll set the ISO and shutter speed and the camera will figure out the correct aperture value. And it does that using the built-in light meter. Now the question you're asking me is, well, which one do I start with? Should I set the aperture or should I set the shutter? Well, it really depends on the kind of photographer that you are. Traditionally, scenic photographers and portrait photographers are more concerned with the aperture than they are with the shutter. And the reason for that is the aperture helps us control how much of an image is in focus. And scenic photographers want everything in focus from the front to the very end. So they want a small aperture value and the shutter can do whatever it wants to do because the camera's on a tripod. And portrait photographers want sort of the opposite of that. They want a nice clear image of somebody's face, but they want the background to fall out of focus and the aperture helps us do that. So scenic photographers, uh, scenic photographers and portrait photographers care about the aperture. Well, people that deal with motion, specifically sports photographers, they care about the shutter because the shutter controls motion. It either freezes motion or it shows motion because the shutter controls the, the duration of time, how long light comes into a camera. So if you wanna shoot somebody dunking a basketball or a race car or a bicycle going by, you care about your shutter speed and the aperture can do whatever it wants to do and you're probably still going to be happy. That's the beginning point. We're gonna delve into both of those things in future episodes. In fact, we're gonna delve into all of this over a series of episodes. The next episode, we're gonna talk about depth of field and the aperture and all the things that it does and how the aperture affects your lens choices. So you'll learn how to buy the proper lens for your needs. Then we're gonna talk about the shutter speeds. We're gonna understand stops, how everything works together. We're gonna to understand metering. We're gonna talk about how the camera uh, meters light and sometimes it gets it wrong. And we're gonna tell you how to get it right every single time. I'm gonna tell you how to shoot in manual mode using the exposure triangle and a lot more. So stick with us. We have a lot to come in exploring photography over the next few episodes. Well, thanks for joining me for this episode of Exploring Photography. Now, don't forget everything that I'm talking about today. You can read more about that at the Adorama Learning Center. It's absolutely free, so check that out. And Adorama TV is absolutely free. So click the subscribe button because I know you don't wanna miss a single episode. Well, thanks for joining me this week and I'll see you again next time. Do you want great looking prints at low cost? Be sure to visit our easy to use online printing service. Adorama Pix has professionals who treat your images with the utmost care that you can count on. For a quick turnaround on photos, cards, or albums, use adoramapix.com.